Kom Hey YouTube, Coppersan here. We're starting our next season of Zero to Hero today. But this time I want to do the videos a bit differently. Instead of just showing what I upgraded and what my stats are, I want to focus a bit more on what I focus on myself when I'm progressing and how I can get through the game as quickly as possible and as complete as possible, you know, doing all the important things. With these Zero to Hero series, I start on a new account with no other characters on it. It's a fresh account and this will be our first character. We're going to be building it up all the way to level 250 and our goal is to defeat up to Lotus and Damien. And for this season, there is also a bit of a twist. I cannot die once. Once on this character. If I do, I have to delete it. So this is going to be either a deadless run or a very short season. So today I'm going to show you what I think you should focus on when you're playing the game on a brand new character for the first 10 hours of playing the game. 10 hours from now you're going to have reached level 208. You'll have most of your gear slots filled out. About half a billion mesos. We're going to be unlocking boss fights, crafting, familiar slots and much more. The character that we're going to be playing is Hyper Burning and we will make use of the events that are there up until February. Starting off, we're just following the quest line until we reach level 40. If you're playing in a reboot server on a new account as well, make sure to open up the reboot box at level 30 to get some free items, mesos and more. Once we hit level 40, we open up the guide menu and accept our very first guide UI reward. The guide menu offers rewards if you reach certain levels. Be mindful though of which rewards you select. Burning characters cannot make use of any level of potions that you unlock at around higher levels from the guide UI. We grab those level 30 rewards which is a free pet, a title that can be transferred within the account giving bonus EXP, stats and star force and a hyper teleport rock. Belts and face accessories are pretty difficult to get early on, so the next thing we're gonna do is complete the Rihanna Straight Team Dungeon to get both of those. Completing this full Team Dungeon starting at level 40 on a burning character will get you all the way to level 70. Before we start grinding, also complete the Have You Learned About Pets, Potential and Bonus Stat quests from the Light Bulb. They're level 33 and level 50 quests. And the Eye Opener as well. This rewards you with another free pet, a ring, a shoulder and a badge that we all get to use early on. Your early game goals should be to reach level 200 as fast as possible. That's where we unlock most of the good stuff and we have to get there ASAP. It took me about four and a half hours of playtime to reach level 202 on this character, including a few short breaks here and there. I trained at Starry to the Sky 1 in Orbis until level 85. Afterwards, I went to the Desert of Serenity in the Aryan Desert for a quick few level ups. After reaching level 91, I went to Authorized Personnel Only. That's the map that I always go to in all of my like leveling and training guides. You can also check out the VOD channel if you want to see the first 6.5 hours playthrough in case you want more. That VOD will be live next Tuesday after this video goes live on that channel. So make sure to check it out, the link is in the description. Reaching level 100, we can start using the Frozen set that we got from the Burning event. You can claim those rewards from the Star Notifier as a Burning character. For my class, Mihil specifically, the Frozen shield is better to use compared to your own shield if you are wearing the full Frozen set. But make sure to save it as well because later on that shield will become better again once the Frozen set falls off basically around level 150. We're also star forcing most of our gear for additional stats. The face mask, shoulder and belt are great to star force first. Those are super cheap because they're low level. Then we star force our weapon for more attack and our overall because overalls get the double amount of stars. So an 8 star overall will give you 16 star force. And because we are a Knight of Sickness, we're making use of the bonus event for these classes. The title that we get at level 100 gives slightly more stats than the guide menu one. So we'll be using that one from here on out until we hit level 200 and we get the next burning reward. We grind at Sky Nest 2 in Leafra until we find a rune. And combined with an MVP buff, we go fight Zakum. Fight a normal version for an ungodly amount of EXP, propelling you to a way higher level instantly. Reaching above level 101, you can also start unlocking the Ignition event. Make sure to start this ASAP as Flaming Mike, the skill you get from this event, is great for getting additional EXP. Make sure to talk to the DJ over there to get the Flaming Mike skill. Reaching level 105 plus, you can also start running Monster Park. These Monster Park stages give great EXP if you need a break from grinding. On Sunday, you can also get double EXP cards from completing Monster Park. And in the reboot server, you can purchase additional tickets in the cash shop for Mesos. You can run Monster Park for a max maximum of 7 times per day. You can also use Monster Park coins to purchase potions over here at this NPC for bonus EXP, attack speed or attack and also save up for a greed pendant so you can start working on your drop gear. From level 121 to level 130 I train at dual ghost pirates. This map still has decent burning levels. You can find this one on the left side of the clock tower bottom floor in Ludibrium. At level 130 I went to the close by Korean Folk Town to complete the wanted sign quests. These give a decent amount of EXP and mesos and are great to do regardless 
regardless if you're burning or not, and it breaks up the endless grind a bit as well. But we were done with these quests around level 148, and reached level 150 by training in the Cave of Trials 3 in El Noth. You should have plenty of Star Force, thanks to our Star Forcing early on. Reaching level 150, we get the Fafnir set from the Burning Rewards, which gives us a massive power boost. Also, do not forget about your Hyper Skills and Hyper Stats that unlock at level 140. Your goal early on should be to be able to one-shot monsters when you're grinding. This generally helps speed up leveling a lot more than, for example, putting a few points in bonus EXP. To help boost our damage, I'm putting hyper stats in critical rate, normal monster damage, and damage. Focus on those three stats first in that order, so critical rate, normal monster damage, and then damage. If you already have max critical rate, focus on critical damage instead. We also worked hard enough to get 300 points from the Ignition event, giving us a few skill points that we can use at the Ignition Blaze tab. One-shotting monsters is our game, so we're leveling up normal monster damage twice. Using the Cygnus event, we also get a trade boost potion at level 150. We're leveling up Charm, so we can unlock our pocket slot. No more quests are needed to get this, just get your Charm up to level 30, which takes one trade boost potion and you're good to go. So we take a quick break from grinding and have a tense battle with normal Hilla. We succeed in killing her without dying to a random damage reflection and grab our first pocket item. After trading a few more levels at Notebooks in the Kerning Tower, we reach level 169. Rocking 2k stats, it's time to focus a bit on our inner ability. Mihail ideally wants to get either boss damage or chance to skip cooldowns. If we get 20% mesos, I'll take that as well to help boost our grinding gains. We're not super lucky though, and we don't even rank it up to legendary. We're gonna try that again later. At level 181, we again take a break from grinding to get ourselves a ring. We complete three quests over here at New Leaf City to get one coin that is needed to purchase it. You can start Start this quest line at 170 over at Icebeard Slim and then go to Lita Lawless to get the next quest. She has you defeat mushrooms, slimes, and boomers. Those boomers explode when you get too close and deal some mean damage. Be careful if you're on a squishy character. I train at Darkness Forest 2 until level 190, then at Stumps and Fest 2 in Future Period until we hit level 199. Sorry if I'm not focusing too much on the grinding spots, but for the last 6 videos I trained classes to level 200, and with the abundance of grinding spots guys available, I hope this isn't an issue. The final level up to level 202 we get from completing the introduction quest over at Scrapyard. We also start a housing quest to get rid of that annoying light bulb above our head. But no need to focus on that right away, just start it and don't complete it, at least the light bulb is gone now. We complete a 5th job advancement and finally, welcome to Maple Story. We can now also start the Clover event, this one unlocks at level 200. This event is amazing for your progression, so make sure to start it once you reach level 200. You can get a ton of note stones, a piggy bank for additional mesos and much more from this event, it's really powerful. After opening up all the rewards we got, like from the Burning event and from the Cygnus event, we have even more node stones and a few epic potential scrolls as well. We use one of those on our shield, not the frozen one, but the one we got earlier, our regular shield, and try to roll for 6% attack lines. In the end, I settled for like 6% strength and like 24 attack. I got kind of bored of cubing, so I just went to do something else. Also, don't forget to unlock your Legion as well. This will provide you with some nice bonus stats along the way, especially once you start to focus on your other characters, your Legion and Link Skill Mules. We use the skill window to open up the V Matrix in your fifth job tab. We got so many notes, but of course, no holy symbol. We quickly check for any useful notes. What I recommend to do is once you find the notes for your class, always fuse them, level them up. You always keep holy symbol, Erda Nova, Erda Shower, Empress Blessing or whatever blessing skill you have, Phalanx Charge for Night of Sickness and Weapon Aura notes for Warriors since you want to use more of those later. And save at least one Blink, Speed Infusion and Sharp Eye note too if you have those, we can equip those later on. When I was grinding, I opted to not use Mihil's more defensive fifth job skills and just equip more trios and skill notes. Make sure to get Holy Symbol as soon as possible. I had to craft this one myself by disassembling some of the notes that I didn't use. I usually disassemble all purple notes as well and those other duplicate skill notes. Like, I don't need rope lift 20 times. I went for a good trio and sharp eyes next. Here are my notes at level 208 as an example. I still can't one shot, so I'm looking for a bit more damage. Hence, I got two notes that boost my main grinding skills and sharp eyes. Holy Symbol gives us more EXP and more drop rate, which will help us in turn get more notes as well, so that's always very useful to get. Thanks to all the boosts that I got from my trios, Radiant Cross already has a 30% bonus final damage boost, which is not too bad. Don't forget to also enhance your slots as well every time you level up. I always go for the Holy Symbol and Trio Slots first, leveling those up. You also get quite a few Symbol Selector Coupons from all those events. Save those for later. You want to drop them in either Latchlin or later Symbols, because those will be a lot harder to get than Vanishing Journey and Choo Choo. 
Our next goal is to get some more boss accessories. I didn't find Hortel yet, so I could kill the Kills version after reaching level 202, uh, but alas, we only got a pendant and like nothing else. I also completed the short supporting Helysium questline, so we get access to the Easy Magnus Simulator. This questline is a level 90 quest. At least he was kind enough to drop his shoulders, so we could start using that. We want to get the boss set ASAP. We starve for our remaining items to 10 stars and keep going. Time for some more rings. Next we're gonna get the Platinum Cross Ring from the Silent Crusade questline. Don't forget to assign the Silent Crusade key to your key bindings so you can open up the UI and access the store. This questline takes you all over the place. Keep an eye on your light bulb as sometimes quests appear in there as well. Shouldn't be too hard to follow, but just make sure to keep an eye on that. Completing up to chapter 2 unlocks the prequest for the Akarian boss. I'm not facing him yet because I'm pretty sure I will die and this is gonna be a zero death run. So I wanna be a little bit overpowered before we actually go there and just we can just one shot him. No trouble, you know. So I want to get a bit stronger first. And completing chapter 2 also rewards the best ring you can get from this quest line. This item cannot get potential, but you'll have more Star Force this way and just a few more stats. With that done, I also gave my inner ability another shot, finally getting it to legendary. In like a few more resets, we actually unlocked plus one. One, attack speed which is great because this class does not use plus one attack speed that's just wonderful my main still hasn't gotten this after 20 million billion honor exp but sure we'll, we'll get we'll go for plus one attack speed for now i guess time to fill up more equipment slots though we're gonna start completing the afterlands theme dungeon i got a full dedicated guide for this dungeon on the channel as well i would definitely highly recommend following that not to just insert some video there but uh, if you do it wrong, you're gonna be in a whole world of pain. So make sure to follow that guide, please, for your own sanity. This dungeon with the guide takes about 40 minutes to complete. It's pretty fast and pretty fun in my opinion. Just don't go into any special portals that spawn here. They give like no, e those Polo and Frito portals, they give like no EXP whatsoever. They're set to like level 70 or 50 or something, I don't know. Completing this dungeon will give us four totems that we can use to fill up our totem slots. So that's done too. Time for a quick breather. So far it has been 6 hours and 20 minutes that we've been playing. We filled out most of our equipment slots, but we're still running low on a few boss items. And at this time the day was almost over, so I rushed to complete a few more things. Completing the Spot the Differences minigame that can be started at the event map for one of for example. This minigame is pretty tough, but the rewards are absolutely amazing. I got like 60% EXP from this alone or something close to that. You can do it twice a day, so make sure to do it. And just before reset, I completed the Rude Abyss questline. You need to defeat these normal bosses five times before you can start beating up the Chaos bosses. And those are needed for our next gear sets. So make sure to start this questline as soon as you can, so you don't have to go through those five days later once you actually need the gear. Those bosses don't stand a chance against a fifth job character. I defeated Vellum just before reset happened at well, which I was very happy with. A new day means also a new opportunity to finally try and get some boss gear. And this time, Chaos Horntail actually did drop something, giving us a ring and earrings. Now we're talking. Zagoom still gave us nothing, that stingy piece of rock. So we Star Forced our new gear to 10 stars. It's also time to use those epic potential scrolls that we got from the reboot box on those boss accessories. I'm not upgrading my emblem, even though normally you want to go for your weapon, secondary and emblem first. But at level 220, we're gonna get a new one with unique potential anyway. And since this is our first character, we need to be a bit resourceful with the low amount of messes that we have. So I'm not gonna spend anything on that, especially those epic potential scrolls, they're pretty rare to combine. Aim to get at least 6% main stat on your items. I use the occult cubes on the temporary effect on your items as well to reroll those to get 6% main stat. And of course the ring, the shoulder and the earrings that we're upgrading. I did another round to spot the differences since it was a new day. And uh, no, Maple, I did not have fun. And finally completed the introduction quest to Vanishing Journey. Make sure to also use the stones that you get from the 5th job advancement to get some bonus EXP filling those up. I reached level 208 while completing the questline thanks to the stones and the events. With the questline done, I recommend completing your dailies and complete the introduction to Reverse City, which will most likely already push you into the next area. However, I also want you to take a moment to reflect. Do you like the class that you're playing? Do you want to go hard or go home? Because if you want to go hard, there are a few more things you can do. First, let's go back to Edelstein to hunt some low-level monsters to collect three familiar cards of the monsters over here. You can access the familiar system by clicking on that Pokedex at the left side of your screen to start the quest. You can open the familiar UI by clicking on the, this thing over here in your equipment window. Collecting these three monsters unlocks a badge, and this unlocks another slot for your familiars. Now you can equip two at a time. Reveal the familiar cards that you found so far. You can double click them to use them, add them to your Pokedex, and then click them again, spend some meso and reveal them. I managed to get one that gives additional critical rate and one that slightly increases drop rate. You're gonna be looking for a meso and item drop rate effects 
and ignore defense as well. Critical rate ain't bad either since we don't have that maxed out yet at 100%. We're right now, we are about 8.5 hours in. For the remaining 90 minutes, we're gonna be slowly running through the Threads of Fate questline. Either complete Reverse City and your dailies or do this one. Make sure to still do your dailies though, but you can also start doing this one. This questline can be started over at the Mushroom Shrine. I had to be pretty careful actually to not die during this questline. The chase sequence and boss fight both have instant death mechanics. Thankfully though, we did manage to survive, of course, else I would have deleted the character. This dungeon is a very slow grind though, but it's definitely worth it. You get a nice cape that are these wings and a good medal. If you don't like the bonus stats you get on your cape on your wings, throw them on the ground. That way you can just get a new one with different bonus stats. It's pretty convenient, just don't tell Nexel. Completing this dungeon also unlocks the Threats of Fate UI. Here you can select one of the NPCs and give them gifts or talk to them. Uh, you want to be trying to unlock the Ask function. This unlocks after getting your closeness of the NPC up to 50, if I remember correctly. You get different asks per day and you try to get chop wood or gather herbs. Those will give you herb pouches containing some of the ingredients that are needed to craft wealth acquisition potions. That's the main reason we're doing this, those wealth potions, or webs for short. These increase the amount of mesos that you find while grinding. We're going hard, remember, so we have to go through all of this just to make that easier. The recipes for this potion can be found from boss monsters. I didn't get one yet, but you need to have level 10 in alchemy as well to create it. So let's hop over to Ardent Mill and start leveling up our alchemy. The easiest way to level Level this up is to mine silver herbs in the first herb area. These drop seeds and plants that you'll need to craft defense and MP potions. Craft those and then purchase the recipe for defense and MP pills over at this NPC over here. Now you can use the same potions that you crafted earlier to make, turn them into pills and get even more alchemy XP. You can do this up to level 6, then craft the stronger versions of the same defense and MP potions and pills for even more EXP. I recommend that you already start on leveling up your alchemy in case you do find a recipe for those wealth acquisition potions. But honestly, no rush. If you're starting fresh, I'm pretty sure most of this is already pretty overwhelming. So don't worry about this too much. If you don't want to do Threads of Fate, it's like one and a half, one hour, 40 minutes. It's pretty long and it can be pretty tedious. So if you don't feel like it, just don't do it. Have fun, you know. But it will definitely help you once you're able to start creating those potions to get even more funding, which will help you progress even faster. And one more thing I like to mention is ways to get more mesos. Both of these unlock around level 100. You can unlock Maple Tour. The NPC of Maple Tour can be found in Hennessy's. You can complete this twice a day to get mesos. It works similar to Monster Park and you can claim your mesos once a week. Being over level 200 also means you can already start running the highest level dungeon which will net you more mesos. And unlock the level 100 Ursus quest. Twice a day you'll get a notice when this boss rewards are doubled. Most maplers will be fighting the boss at this time so it should be easy to find a party. This boss can reward up to 90 million mesos per day if you deal enough damage. So make sure to compete in this one too. And that's how I spent my first 10 hours in the game on a brand new account. We got to 4.2k stats, level 208. This is my gear and I'll show you my familiars and notes as well. So while I do that, what do you think of this type of video? Did it help? Would you like to see what I do for the next 10 hours as well? Feel free to leave that in the comment if you want to see more like this. You can follow the journey of this account on the Twitch channel live as well. And of course you can watch it back on the full channel once those videos are done processing. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, many thanks to our members for making these videos possible. Special thanks to... To Niels de Comic, Rama Waar, Sebastian Hanoi, Riley Yas, Terry Kim, Varese, Kaudi Mora, Wai Lee, History Cannon, Backspace OTI, Saffron X, Ziggy Deer, Flidiet, Knife Sue, Cloudfix, Gusus Rodriguez, Digby, Vyra, Trevor, Michael Manchaka, Ratius, Justin Ville, Silvio Nato, Afterlord and the Score MS, Striker Elk, Tidal One Pun, Radical Jaws, Riser Aryu, Sir Tito 655, Matthias Simonson, PC Game Life, The Passenger, Martin Panzik, Conra Cristales, Ace Light, Mr. Nark, Ben Wolf, Max Bernhardt, Mukao 1017, BMB King, Scotty Flies Fast, Pris Killa, Brandon Cam, Vague Botnet, Feko, Victor Sundstrom, Simak Only, Rashid Alarudi, Gerlando Balavia, Gianfranco Calderon Canafero, Lucky Beats, Martin Udev, Gummy Bullet, Lord Fazil, Spuds D. Kaiser, Zonen, That Archer Guy, Grogro, and Gabriel Eck. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and happy mapling!